Hi everybody, welcome to this week's Ghetto Vlog. We're kicking things off with a bang. That building that you can see behind me there, well, there's a bit of a queue, that is hosting the Black Country Gaming Market. It's the third one, um, only the first time I've been able to make it due to conflicting schedules. So yeah, really excited to see what's here. Um, don't know what to expect, like I say, never been before. Don't know how big it is, how small it is. So let's go find out together. As you can see, it's getting busier in here. I have spent way more than I thought I would. Um, yeah, got some amazing stuff. A bag full of games. And uh, every time I walk by, I seem to buy something else. So.
Right, I'm Dana. This is our third event for Black Country Events here in uh, Briley Hill. I also run Hidden Chess Gaming and um, just come and support us. We're hopefully going to do another one later in the year. Fantastic. Wow, okay, so um, did very well. I was not expecting that. When I first got there and I saw it was a small venue, I thought, okay, like, it's nice to come and support, but it was definitely quality over quantity, um, as will be reflected in my pickup. So I got some really nice bits, spent more than I intended or expected to. Uh, but whilst we're in this part of the country, I feel like I've got going vintage gamer, right? So let's go and fly see Nick and then we'll go back to the free point there. Before that, bit of Yorkshire. Free essentials in this lot. Vintage Gamer done and today's turning into a haul for the ages. Um, yeah, grabbed a couple more games. Two that have been high on my list of wants for various different reasons. A couple of games I've kind of got unfinished business with, so it's nice to grab those. Both at the glass cabinet, which tends to mean expensive. But uh, yeah, man, that's it now. We're going to head back to the 3.0 and take a look at all of this stuff on board. Let's go. Retro Ghetto.
Well, that was some start to the week and the vlog, right? Um, before we get into the ins and outs of the retro gaming market, Vintage Gamer and all of my pickups, I just want to take this opportunity while I've got everyone's attention early in the vlog to quickly go into this. So, um, a few weeks back now at Leeds Retro Game Market, I found a bag on the floor. And inside that bag was a Neo Geo Pocket Color, uh, a copy of Metal Slug, and a loose N64 cartridge for, I think it was 1080 snowboarding. Um, with the help of you guys, I sort of put out an appeal to try and track down the owner of these lost items to get them back to them. And uh, thankfully, I, I was able to track down said person. Now, this is where the good news story turns into a great news story. So, the individual concerned, um, I was talking to them, and it's a very successful person. Um, an entrepreneur that's done fantastic things in the business world and he bought a lot of stuff on the day and uh, as I say he dropped his bag um, as I was sort of chatting to this guy he said to me um, you know I think it was along the lines of if no one had come forward that you know you could have kept, kept them for yourself and I said that was never sort of the motive I would have um, auctioned them off or done something for charity we've done a lot of work here for Alzheimer's Research UK and um, you know I'm sort of feel like I'm overdue doing a bit more for them I think we've raised about 1500 pounds so far and he said, you know what? That's a fantastic charity and a great idea. Keep them and raffle them off for charity. So I just want to say once again, massive thank you to the generosity of the individual that lost these items. Um, I'm not a big SNK Neo Geo guy, but there's a quite a lot of value in here. I think, what, well over 200 pounds worth of value in these. So I just wanted to make you guys aware of it. We'll probably do it on next week's vlog, but I'm probably going to do it in like a raffle format or something. But Obviously, any support towards this fantastic charity is much appreciated. So on next week's vlog, I'll give you guys all the information as to how you can donate to Alzheimer's Research UK and ultimately how you can have your chance to win these fantastic goodies. But yeah, man, now let's get into what okay, I picked up. Okay, so the Black Country Games Fair. Uh, as I said, the first one I've been to, the third one. Um, and like I said, I did not know what to expect. When I got there, I initially thought it's not massive. But I would definitely describe it as quality over quantity. As you would have seen on the footage, um, there was no like real filler. All the stalls had some really nice bits on them and just a great sort of feeling. Um, it almost felt like more for the community than some of these bigger events. You know, you go to some of these events, they're too big, it's so busy, it's so manic, you can barely move, you can't have conversations with people. Um, you can barely see all the stuff on the stalls. You feel like you're sort of elbowing your way in, right? And very different feel, felt very much more like a community event. And I think that's sort of, I'm assuming that's what they were going for because it doesn't seem like something that's there as a cash grab. It was only two pound for early entry. After that, it was completely free. There was loads of great people there. I'm not gonna try and name everybody, but loads of great people from the community, loads of fellow tubers that I met. And it was great to meet and speak to everybody that I met and spoke to on the day. A few ghetto gang members as well, which was great to meet in person. Um, and. From my experience of going to the various shops that are in the Black Country, I mean the Birmingham and Black Country area has got to be the best place to hunt for video games in the whole of Great Britain. It's just so densely packed with video game and toy shops and from my experience just very nice, very friendly, very warm and welcoming people and that was definitely echoed by today's uh, market. I really enjoyed it, I spoke to loads of people who watched the channel, uh, so massive shout out to everybody that stopped and had a conversation with me. And, I did not intend to spend as much money as I spent. I, I genuinely thought I was just going to go, show my face, have a look around because I've not been before. Um, there's lots of events coming up over the next few weeks and months. Loads of big events here in the UK. Loads to look forward to on the channel. And I thought, I'm not going to go and spend loads of money. I'm just going to go and see what it's about. I spent all my money and then some, right? <laughs> but yeah, uh, well, let's get into it, shall we? Uh, so the first one was actually kind of a pre-arranged deal. I've done this with the viewer of the channel. Um, a big collector. Um, I'll actually put the information up now on the screen for his Instagram. He's got like loads of complete sets, but he's more of a Sega guy. Uh, and he messaged me and says, Oh, I think you need this. And I do. And we agreed a fantastic price. And that is Yogi Bears. Let's give it the correct name Yogi Bears Cartoon Capers. So this is a 1994 Cybersoft developed platformer. In America, it's known as Adventures of Yogi Bear. Now, unsurprisingly, you play as the beloved cartoon character Yogi Bear as you progress through just five levels in an attempt to stop Jellystone Park being turned into a chemical dumping ground. Now, from what I've sort of 
scene uh, of this game, really nice visuals, very sort of true to the cartoon itself and quite a fast moving um, platformer for this era. But I think the general consensus is that it was sort of aimed towards a younger market, which I mean, it's no surprise, right? It's based on Yogi Bear. So I think it's very easy. I think you can get through this game in under an hour. Um, but all that aside, uh, one I've been looking to add for a long time, simply because I owned the instruction manual to this. It's one of them games where I've been sitting on the manual. I've been waiting for it to come into stock at CEX prior to the changes with the with and without manual. And I thought I can't really lose a lottery because I've got the manual, but as it is an hour, the surplus manual. Um, because this is complete, it's obviously um, seen better days, but I got this for a fantastic price. I think I can get this cardboard looking nice and certainly SNES wall worthy with the aid of a protective cover as well. So massive shout out to Jono on this one um, for doing me a fantastic price. And yeah, make sure you check out his Instagram to see all his fantastic collection. I think he's got like four or five full sets as well. So yeah, real hardcore collector. Um, and what I probably should have showed first, because I normally start with the bits and the bobs, right? was this now I'm trying to sort of limit my toy purchases and my bits and my bobs because I just don't have the room and I'm trying to sort of focus just more so on video games here in the 3.0 but firstly I just love this thing I think it looks great this is from the era um, the adventures of Pac-Man I believe so sort of that Wii U era I've got the Wii U games this is I think it's 2010 2012 at Namco Bandai now I would have bought this anyway, but it felt like a fate because my boy Theo over at Slam Mouse TV, he's been in Italy recently. I know he's been to a fantastic sort of toy fair there called sort of Toy See Me, I think it's called. And he sent me a picture of some fantastic video game stuff. So make sure you go and check out his uh, channel because he'll have a video out soon. And yeah, some real nice sort of like store display video game related products. And on the store and on the picture he sent me was this. And I said, oh, I definitely would have bought that Pac-Man. And the very next day, I saw this. So I've gone from never seeing one to seeing two in like a few hours. It definitely felt like fate, so I had to buy this. Um, the chap who saw it was let me have this for a good price, just five pounds. It does actually make a noise. It wasn't working, but then I took the battery cover off uh, to replace the batteries, but it's those sort of circular ones. I don't have any of them. But just playing around with the batteries, it now... So I think that's designed to sort of mimic the noise of him eating the biscuits, and then, like I say, I think he probably does need batteries so it's way out but i was just intrigued as to what noises it makes and now i know um so yeah he can now sit on the shelf and gather dust for the rest of eternity <laughs> but yeah i love things like this so it's really happy to add that we'll find a home for it somewhere in this room um and then i did get a gift as well so a view of the channel um reached out to me they saw that i was recently sent that copy of soul Calibur 5 the collector's edition that didn't have a game in it uh, and he said um he had a spare copy of the game uh, so it's very kind of him to pass this on to me to complete that as well. So massive shout out to you. You know who you are. Um, then from there, as I think you will have seen on the footage, I found a store that did have quite a few PS3 essentials uh, and a couple of really nice ones. Um, ones I, mean, I always say every time. I'm going to stop saying it. Ones I've not seen before. Obviously, I've not seen them before or I would have picked them up. <laughs> but yeah, I haven't seen them before. Uh, the first one is uh, Sonic Unleashed. So this is a 2008 platformer. Uh, Sonic has to save the world from Dr. Eggman as uh, he unleashes the Dark Gaia, uh, an ancient evil which periodically turns Sonic into a werewolf, dubbed in the game as a werehog. This game combines 2D side-scrolling with third-person viewpoints, probably similar to Sonic Generations, a game that I quite enjoyed, actually. I put quite a bit of time into that one. Um, I haven't played Sonic Unleashed, but by reading um, the sort of description, that's how Sonic Generations plays. Uh, this actually got quite mixed reports, but I think generally more favourable than 2015's sort of like revamp of the series Sonic the Hedgehog. Um, so yeah, an interesting title. Let me know in the comments if you've played this one. This is actually the fourth um, Sonic PS3 Essential that I own. I think, or I'm hoping, that's all of them now. So yeah, nice to find that, and that was uh, £10. I got both of these for 15 uh, the next one was Super Street Fighter 4 Arcade Edition. For me, the last great Street Fighter game. I really enjoyed Street Fighter 4. Um, 5 I put a lot of time into. And I don't know. 6 has its positives, but I kind of having to accept, I think, at this time that Street Fighter is not for me anymore. I still love it. I still love the franchise. I still love the artwork, the lore. I love collecting the figures and everything like that. But I think I'm more... Street Fighter 4 and before. I, I, I'm just giving up that they're going to release um, 
a Street Fighter that's for me. I've given up on them re-releasing like an Alpha or doing like a 2D Street Fighter or I think I'm just an old man in the young world, right? And uh, wanting something that's probably never going to happen. So rather than being disappointed, I think I've just accepted my fate. Enjoy Street Fighters 2 to 4. Um, there's plenty of them. Um, but yeah, just nice to add two more essentials to the set. So top, top, top finds there. And then that takes me to the find which kind of put me over my budget, so to speak. Um, this is what made the day quite expensive for me. So uh, I bought both of these for £70, but I think I got a fantastic deal, uh, as you'll see why in a moment. This one was pretty much free, so this one was pretty much like an afterthought thrown in. Uh, and that is the Mass Effect Collector's Limited Edition on the Xbox 360. Um, you guys have known I'm quite big on Xbox 360 at the moment and uh, I'm liking all the collector's editions and stuff So this comes in like a large Steel tin with real nice artwork on it and then inside You've obviously got the various different manuals and then what I'm assuming is like an art book Yep, nice artwork in there and a bonus content disc. I'm not sure what's on there. But yeah, like I say, this was pretty much like a make weight in the deal. And that deal was for this game. Now this game, I saw twice at the market before I saw this copy. I saw one for 125, I think it was. And I think one for about 150. It's a game I've had on my radar for quite some time. The box art is absolutely stunning. And that's what initially sort of caught my eye. And then it's been going up in price. So when I saw this copy at this price, uh, I knew I had to have it, uh, and that is Skeleton Crew. So this is a 1995 core developed Mega Drive and Genesis release. It never actually got any release uh, in Japan or Asia at all. Uh, quite a late release for the system, which probably goes to explain its sort of like rarity and price to some extent. You can play as three different characters, rib, spine and joint. They all play differently. And it's played in like an isometric point of view. I actually played a little bit of this earlier on today and it's really fun games. It's one of the games that always almost felt like it was ahead of its time. Um, almost plays a bit more like a sort of Dreamcast era game, sort of, uh, more so than a Mega Drive game. And like I say, I got this for a fantastic price. So I paid for this and the Mass Effect £70. Now I was able to convince him to give them me for £65, but I actually had a rare moment. <laughs> of uh, generosity where I said no you know what call it 70 and that's because uh, the gentleman that was selling these was the owner of Black Country t-shirts and he'd actually previously sent me a, a retro ghetto t-shirt he sort of made the design and everything it's fantastic and he sent me over like the JPEG image and everything and told me to use it which I'm going to be doing going forwards um, so yeah shout out to them so if you're ever in the area and you want any printing doing make sure you go and check them out I'll try and post a link in the description below but the reason I was able to get these so cheap is because this is a German copy, but you wouldn't know except for the writing on the back. So it's all in English on the front, it's all in English on the side, the manual starts in English, the cartridge plays and is written in English, the only German on it is the blurb on the back. So I mean, for me it's a no-brainer to get this game for pretty much half the price with what I've got to say is stunning, just quintessential Mega Drive artwork, right? I mean, this is just everything I love about that sort of era of Mega Drive artwork. And whilst I'm a huge Super Nintendo fan, personally, I think it's the better system. When it comes to box art, I probably would have to say Mega Drive, right? It's just, yeah, it's just on a different level. Um, but yeah, to get it for pretty much half the price, simply because there's some writing on the back, which is German, <laughs> all day long so really happy with that really happy to add a nice blue spine game to my collection and i want to give a massive shout out to ant and dana the organizers of the event keep doing what you're doing guys because yeah like i say it's definitely an event for the community um brilliant sort of feel good environment i really enjoyed my time there and if i hadn't parked at the local asda and was running fast out of my two hours before i got a fine i probably would have spent uh, longer walking around and talking to everybody but yeah, just a great day all around. And once again, massive shout out to everybody that stopped me and said that they were enjoying the channel. Uh, it means a lot, it really does. Um, so yeah, um, spent more than I intended to, but very happy with what I came away with. Now we've got loads to be cracking on with. I've got loads of jobs to do, and hopefully on this vlog, we're gonna finally get all that Super Nintendo cardboard restored that we picked up a couple of weeks ago. And the PS2 TV should hopefully be finally getting put on its extendable shelf. I have bought these brackets which I'm hoping are going to do the job so yeah we'll get to that shortly as well but 
Let's crack on. And I almost forgot, we did of course go to Vintage Gamer, I did grab a nice couple of games, but I'll show you those a little bit later in the vlog because that's going to be relevant to something else that we're going to be doing here in the 3.0, yeah, a little bit later. Okay, so, before we crack on with the inevitable montage, these parcels we still need to open, the PS3 Essentials giveaway, let's get into some Nintendo cardboard restoration. So, we've got the newly acquired... Yogi Bear, we've got these that we picked up from Old School Gaming a few weeks back. There's also another one, which is hidden, because uh, it's covered in mould, we'll get to that last. But I think we're going to try and fix these three up first, and I think the best place to start is to just give them all a nice clean. We're going to flatten them down, get the stickers off, and then we'll take it from there. Flat packed. So after using the hairdryer, that came off with absolute ease. And you could tell we're just trying to get the corners before where it's left their marks. So you can see the benefit of using a hairdryer. Uh, I'm not too fussed about that because I mean, it's not the best box anyway. And these are just sort of like um, placeholders if you like, but you can really see the benefit of using a hairdryer on removing stickers, especially these older stickers. But yeah, that's the stickers removed. Time now to give them all a quick clean. So with them all cleaned, we now go on to the final phase. Now that's the ironing phase. So what you do is simply pop them on an old towel. Then you want to fold the old towel over the top. Make sure it's all nice and flatly laid out underneath. What I tend to do is get a jug of water and flick it on quite liberally across, but not too wet. You don't want it seeping through to the cardboard. You just want to keep it uh, from being too dry. Um, so it's just like a few flicks basically and um, you can always do a bit of trial and error but you can always add more water rather than take it away of course and then just sort of iron over the area not concentrating too much on one area to burn it turn it over periodically and then it should um, sort of straighten it out and give it a bit more rigidity but let's put the theory to the test okay so this one's now been done front and back so as you can see you can already see that it's a lot flatter than it was so before it was all bowed um, so what I tend to do now is uh, assemble it as quickly as possible uh, and then sort of leave it to get thoroughly dry uh, in its assembled state okay so I've repeated the process twice more and there's a saying about not being able to polish a turd but I think these turds have been polished um, obviously there's only so much you can do with the boxes in the way they were but I think if you look at the before and after there's a marked improvement and um, yeah, I'm happy enough with that and especially once you put box protectors on these, they look loads better. So yeah, I think these are all now SNES wall worthy. I'm happy with that, but now we've got to tackle something so foul, it's locked away. Okay, so all jokes aside, this is pretty disgusting um, and it might well end up in the bin. I knew that when I bought it, but you know what I thought? For research purposes, for educational purposes, let's just see if we can fix this up. So the same will be done to the outside of the box as was done to the previous boxes. We'll get the sticker off, we'll clean it. The bigger issue, of course, is the mould which is inside it. Um, my sort of theory is to maybe cut along the seam, so the inside of the flap, 
to try and completely open it, completely flat pack it so I can get access to the complete interior. And then to use sort of multi-surface wipes and not only clean the inside but just keep scrubbing and scrubbing and scrubbing to take off like a layer of the cardboard if you like obviously not right through but to take off some of the cardboard to completely remove the mold which is inside this case I don't know if this is going to work like I say um, but we can try and rescue it I do have the cart for this as well as an extra incentive I can put the cart in this box but let's see how we get on Okay, so we're in. You can see the extent of it. It's not as bad as I actually thought it was going to be. So now is the first part of my plan, which is to scrub it vehemently with disinfectant wipes. Just try and take as much cardboard off without damaging the outer box. Okay, so one wipe in, and you can see this is what I was talking about. I was trying to get that layer of card off without going through to the back and damaging that artwork. Um, so yeah, I'm just gonna keep going. Okay, two wet wipes in. Okay, so as you can see, a lot of cardboard has been removed, um, virtually all the mold. I'm gonna go at it once more. Obviously the whole thing uh, is a lot more flimsy now than it was. Uh, so I think the next stage, once I've done over that once more, is to go over the front of this uh, with an antiseptic wipe, just to be sure. Then we'll let it dry. And then we'll come back and see what kind of state it's in. Um, hopefully it'll be dry, it'll look okay, and then we'll set about making it look better aesthetically. Um, if I walk in and there's a clicker in the room, then uh, the mould's evolved. The weather changing for the better is great, but it does mean back to cutting the grass. I just I hate this job. I'm done. Okay, with the grass done, let's go and check how the Super Nintendo cardboard's getting on. What? What's that noise? What? What the? Quick, run, 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 run! Okay, so, decided to pop to the locals. If you saw Wednesday's video, you will know that um, I need to return the copy of Deadfall. I ended up getting two copies, one of which was a collector's edition, bizarrely for the same price. Um, I'll link that uh, video below if you haven't seen it. Um, also, I've got that Wii remote that I found the other day from a charity shop. So yeah, a couple of reasons to limit to CEX. Any excuse for me to go out, right, and go to the local CEX and hunt local charity shop. So yeah, let's go see what we can find. Okay, so a quick McDonald's pit stop. Um, I don't often pick up games that you can't take straight to CX. I like getting that instant gratification and I can't be bothered with the hassle of eBay for a few quid, but um, I definitely thought this was worth picking up. Disney Infinity, you see a lot of these in charity shops. Um, this PS4 version sells regularly for about 10 pounds on eBay and for 50p I didn't want to leave it behind. Um, it might be one that's just worth bundling up, just get a few of these and then sell them as a bundle or a job lot down the line. And uh, yeah, for 50p, like I said, there's a lot of value. Um, percentage wise in that so uh, yeah we're gonna quickly eat and then we're gonna fly to CEX um, I had quite a few people ask me last time about my latest McDonald's hat so what I've often done now is since they've in, increased the price of the chicken mayo which was my standard right when it was a pound that was my staple now you can get what's like a, a sub of the day type thing and I think they're like £1.50 
So today it's the crispy chili. Now what I always do is I buy one of these, I buy small fries, and I literally put all the fries on the wrap, and it comes to like three quid, and uh, it's enough to keep the grown man going for an hour or so. So that's my McDonald's top tip, and, and let's get back to it. Okay, so I survived my trip to the locals and my running with the clicker. <laughs> we'll get to that uh, SNES box shortly. Um, didn't actually buy anything from CX. It was kind of a case of mission accomplished. I went to get my CX vouchers, which unsurprisingly I've already put to use for a future video. Um, I did, however, on the, chari on the way home, go to my local charity shop. Grabbed a couple of games that are worth picking up. This is the one that charges just £1 for a game. Uh, so the first one was Modern Warfare 2. Not really much value in that. It's like £1.60 trading. And the one that was worth picking up, I'm sure this has gone up recently because I'm sure there was a period in time where these weren't really worth picking up. But Grand Theft Auto 4. Um, yeah, these are definitely worth picking up, especially for a pound. I think there's like a combined £5, six pound trading on the couple of pounds spent. So yeah, it can't grumble at that. Um... And I think this is a good time before we open all of these boxes up here, of which, I'm going to be honest, I don't know what's in most of them, uh, to look at what I picked up from Vintage Gamer. So, um, start of the week, as you know, I went to the Black Country Game Market, and I mean, when you're in that neck of the woods, you have to go and visit Vintage Gamer, right? Uh, old School Gaming wasn't open, they're not open on Saturdays, no, Sundays. Um, but, whilst I was at Vintage Gamer, I picked up two PS3 Essentials. <laughs> and uh, they were glass cabinet PS3 Essentials, right? So they were sort of heavy hitters, nice ones to tick off the list. And not only that, they're both games I've got a little bit of history with. So I'm very happy to be able to tick them off my PS3 Essentials tick sheet. Now the first one is Fallout New Vegas Ultimate Edition. The reason um, I've got history with this one, when I first started collecting Essentials, this was in my local CEX. I left it behind because at that point, there were so many Essentials available to me for like £2, £3, £4. This is like an £18 game, I think, at CEX. Uh, so I just thought, I'll save that for another day. I'll save the more expensive ones. 
Uh, and then it disappeared and then I haven't seen it since. So it's kind of like, oh, I should have bought that at the time, right? So I think getting the more expensive ones is usually the best way to approach any sort of full set or subset collecting. Um, so yeah, really happy to find Fallout New Vegas, the ultimate edition. And these are why some of the um, essentials are sought after, irrespective of people that are going for the complete subset is because you get all of the sort of DLC or the basically the all singing or dancing edition on the disc itself so uh, yeah I think that's probably why this is quite an expensive game the only Fallout I've ever played through is Fallout 4 I've heard good things about New Vegas I've heard good things about Fallout 3 um, so yeah maybe one day I'll jump into those but yeah nice addition to the list and this next one a similar story so this is one that was in the Derby CEX branch we saw it a couple of times on the vlogs if you remember but it didn't have the manual and again an expensive game this one does have the manual. Both of these, by the way, have the red disc. Uh, and that is Dragon Ball Raging Blast 2. Um, so yeah, like I say, just another expensive one. This is one that we saw CEX, didn't have the manual. I don't want to be buying expensive essentials, especially if they're not complete. So it's just going to be a hassle down the line. And I envisage that the Dragon Ball essentials are going to be quite difficult. They're not cheap games. Uh, this is the second one I've got now. I think I've already got... Yeah, I've got Dragon Ball Xenoverse, I've got Dragon Ball Raging Blast 2. I'll have to consult my list as to how many other Dragon Balls there are in the Essentials range. But yeah, just uh, two very nice Essentials, two of the heavier hitters. Uh, we've got Spider-Man last week, right? And, and now we've added these. So yeah, I'm all about adding the more expensive titles to this subset. And with more and more people collecting PS3 Essentials nowadays, uh, yeah, those expensive ones I'm going to envisage are going to go up. And I'm going to make a prediction now that... These games that once upon a time were the last on the shelves, the ones nobody wanted, uh, I believe there's going to come a point where there's going to be a PS3 Essentials tax. I can see it coming, there's so many people collecting these now, I just think we're going to see it first introduced on eBay if it hasn't already, and then I think I won't be surprised if maybe not CEX because they don't list them separately, but uh, independent stores will start charging more for uh, PS3 Essentials. I'm, I can see it happening now. But Yeah, uh, nice to add a couple more. And that takes me to the first of these parcels. So this is an eBay purchase, a PS3 Essential. I did once upon a time say I was going to try and avoid eBay right and I was going to do it all in person. That's kind of still the motive. However, I don't want to be naive. Like I say, there's more and more people doing it. I'm finding less on the shelves. I'm not going to look a gift horse in the mouth. This was one that just popped up while I was looking for something else. I looked into it and I thought, you know what, that's actually cheaper than it would be for me to get it through CEX. Uh, so you know, if it makes sense, I'm not going to pass up the opportunity. And it's sealed. Uh, what else is in here? So this eBay seller has included what I think are Dragon Ball Z cards. Yeah, not sure why, but appreciate it. Um, so yeah, this was less than it would cost me to get this posted from CEX. You can't specify an essential on CEX. Um, so pretty much a win-win all around. And... It's sealed. I'm not sure if this is a factory seal. It's not got like the strip on it or anything. But it's in really nice condition. So uh, it might well be. Either way, I'm happy to keep it in this seal. Uh, and that is Resistance 2. Not a game that I know much about. Um, just looking here. I've got Resistance 3 on PS3 Essentials. So now to add 2 to that is uh, yeah, nice addition. And I think this cost me... I think it was 5 or £6 posted. I, th I think it was listed slightly higher. I, I sent an offer, we negotiated, and uh, we sort of met somewhere in the middle. So, yeah, um, we're growing, right? We are growing. And that takes me to these next couple. And I'm going to be honest, I don't know what's in them. I, I really don't. Uh, it's been one of them weeks, right? It's been really busy. Uh, I was putting a lot of time into the Xbox 360 video that I put out on Wednesday. And... Um, yeah, I've kind of not really been keeping abreast of much uh, else in terms of like what's coming and going. So um, let's just open them and find out, right? It's like Christmas morning. I hope there's notes. I'm going to have to go through conversations. Uh, I remember now. I remember having this conversation. Massive shout out to you, friend of the channel. Uh, is there a note in here? There is a note. Fantastic. Hi Callum, as promised, here are the two essentials uh, I grabbed locally. Keep it going. Cheers, Craig. So Craig, big support of the channel, ghetto gang member, much appreciated my friend. Um, so I remember him uh, messaging me about this one, Toy Story 3. Um, yeah, and as you can see, £10 games. A very generous of you, Craig, much appreciated my friend. 
and this is one that I'd seen also previously. There's a bit of a theme here. I, I remember seeing this. I've also been CX Derby, but again, no manual uh, and a relatively expensive game to not have a manual. This one does have the manual. Um, so yeah, Toy Story 3. Uh, I remember playing some of the earlier Toy Story games and really enjoying them. So this one might be worth sticking in the PS3. And then we've got Arkham City. Sadly, no manual, but I mean a cheap game, right? £2. So this is Batman Arkham City. Now, I remember when he messaged me about this, I had to double check because I've got Batman Arkham Asylum. Game of the Year edition, um, so this is Arkham City, and so yeah, um, we're getting a nice little sizable PS3 Essentials pile here today, right? Um, this is the giveaway, we're going to get to that on this video as well, loads of you people entered for that giveaway, um, so yeah, we're going to get to that a little bit later on, but yeah, it's not going badly, right? And uh, I don't even know what's in this last box, but no idea, I do know who it's from, this is a good friend of the channel, Brad, uh, once again, sorry, massive shout out to Craig. Um, I'll drop you a message um, as soon as I finish recording anyway, but yeah, uh, this is I believe from my friend Brad uh, A friend of the channel, the most generous man uh, in toys and games um, I'm actually going to be meeting Brad for the first time at the NEC Toy Fair which is coming up very soon And I've got like a box of goodies waiting for Brad so I'm really looking forward to meeting him and being able to return uh, some of that generosity that he bestows upon myself and the channel uh, but Like I say, uh, I know that it's him because of the post going on here but I don't know what he sent. I don't remember uh, having a conversation with Brad about... I'm looking for a knife. I don't remember having a conversation with Brad about him sending anything. Um, so yeah, I don't know if this is just a random one. But let's go. Let's take a look. Okay, we have got a note. Hi Callum. Couldn't... <laughs> I like that. Hi Callum, couldn't sell them, couldn't trade them, you might as well enjoy them, Brad. <laughs> Poetic, my friend. Yeah, I like that. Couldn't sell them, couldn't trade them, you might as well enjoy them. And I'm all about that, right? Um, I never ask for anything, and I often say to people, as anybody will attest that sent me anything, I often say, uh, when people say, oh, do you need this? Um, you know, they don't want to take any money for it. I often say, well, trade it to CEX, um, and, uh, you know, invariably people don't want to do that, but uh, it is appreciated <laughs> when people send me anything, of course. But yeah, I'm glad he tried to do that before. Okay, so this is Gladiators of Rome. Hero of Rome, Roman soldier. My lad is obsessed with Roman soldiers. Um, obviously gets it from me in terms of like my collections and stuff. So this is something that will be making his way uh, to Little Man. So thanks for that, Brad. Gladiators of Rome. And then we've got what appeared to be games in here. Ah, so if I remember rightly, Brad found these at a car boot. Brad is like a serial car booter and he found some amazing stuff. Um, puts me to shame. And charity shops. So we've got a couple of Mega Drive games here. I remember him showing me at the time. So we've got VR Virtual Racing. And this is complete. I mean, a nice blue spine Mega Drive game. Shout out to Brad. I'm assuming CEX don't take this then. Uh, it is broken in the corner. Unless that's the reason why. But well, yeah, and is a little bit afraid on the bottom, but it's uh, it's going to be winging its way to my Mega Drive wall, that's for sure. Thank you very much, Brad. And then this next one, uh, Megalomania. Again, complete and in decent condition. Massive shout out to Brad. Thank you very much. And uh, I look forward to seeing you, what I think is early next month, right, at the NEC. Top man. Right, so... Now I have opened all my parcels and created yet more game piles that are dotted around this room. I think it's about time for a montage, right? Montage.
Okay, so with the games put away, the room looking fresh, time to turn our attention back to this mouldy little box. Um, so, I basically repeated all the process that you'd seen previously. We took off the sticker, I disinfected front and back once more, I ironed it, I polished it. The only additional thing that I did was run some PVA glue alongside the strip where we uh, took this box apart and... I think it's as good as it can be. Could I throw this in the bin without being too upset? Absolutely. But it was more of a project, really, to see how far gone a Super Nintendo box can be before you can bring it back. It's hard to get its full rigidity because we took off a lot of the inside cardboard. Um, the the mould's gone. Put it in a box protector. It's very much a placeholder simply because I've got the cartridge. So rather than having a loose cart lying around, I might as well have it sat in this box until a better box comes along. But, uh, yeah, it is what it is. I think from where it was to where it is, it's not too bad. Good morning, all. So, uh, yeah, a bit of a late night last night. I started playing Spec Ops The Line. Uh, really enjoyed it. It was much on the recommendation of a lot of you guys. Um, there's 15 chapters, and I played through five last night. It's a relatively short game, which is what I like. Uh, I'm enjoying it thus far, so hopefully we'll get that finished, and then I'll be able to give you sort of my thoughts on that one. Today was supposed to be the day that I was sorting out the PS2 TV. However, uh, the guy I was gonna borrow a couple of tools from can't make it until next week. So that'll be on next week's vlog now, we'll get to the PS2 TV. Um, if you're wondering what I'm doing, I am sorting out the giveaway for the PS3 Essentials. So, about six to 700 people entered that competition. I do not have the time to enter six to seven hundred different people on an auto generator or old school it, write it down on a piece of paper, pull it out of the hat like I used to do. So what I've been sat here doing is going up and down the comment section um, and I'm literally just going to stop shortly and whoever is the closest entrant to where this stops will be the winner of said PS3 Essential. So I think there's nine of them here, right? So I've been going up and going down and yeah, just completely random. So we're going to do it at random. There's the winner right there. Oh yeah, that's the competition. Winning is essential. So okay, who is it? Tall Bloppy 1995. Winning is essential to make my retro game collecting husband happy. Well, there you go. I uh, hope that has made your husband happy. So that's Tall Bloppy 1995. I'll screenshot that. Yeah, man, uh, there will be another PS3 Essentials giveaway. I'm still, what, don't even know if I'm halfway into my journey yet. So there will inevitably be more doubles uh, added to my collection over time. And then I'll do another giveaway. But massive shout out to everybody that's entered. And again, make sure you tune in to next week's vlog because we're going to be raffling off these for charity. Alzheimer's Research UK, um, such a fantastic cause, something very close to my heart. And uh, yeah, it'd be much appreciated if everyone can get involved and you can win yourself these fantastic prizes on next week's vlog as well as me sorting out the PS2 TV. And we're going to be kicking off next week's vlog with something very special, something I've never done before, somewhere I've never been before. Uh, I'll save that for next week, but yeah, that's going to be kicking off next week's vlog. And I think that's pretty much it. Um, another great week, another market explored, more games added. We're leaving the game room looking better than ever. Um, so yeah man, I uh, can't really ask for much more than that. If you're new to the channel or you're not subscribed, it would be much appreciated. Also, if you want to support the channel further, keep me doing this, keep me doing bigger and better things, you can support via the Ghetto Gang. There'll be a link below. You get exclusive content, access to the Discord and all that good stuff. But guys, have a fantastic Sunday. Thank you very much for taking the time to watch my vlog. Play your games, keep it retro. I'll see you next week in a bit. Retro ghetto. <laughs> Lock into the retro ghetto. Oh.